Hello and welcome back. OK, so I've been developing this VGA circuit for quite a while now, and for the most part it's tracking very much along the lines that I'd planned at the very start of this project. But there have been a couple of things that have caused me to question specifics. If you look back to video 3 where I built the frame buffer, I talked about the various ways we try and mediate memory access between the VGA circuit and the CPU. And the solution I came up with was to not do it, allow the CPU to take complete control of memory while it was doing so, and then it would corrupt the screen. But I then said in software we can work around that by timing our writes to memory appropriately. And that approach has worked quite well for us. It allows us to keep the circuit a lot simpler and the type of games and demos I was expecting to write for this system are going to work absolutely fine like that. A lot of early games hardware worked in that way as well. But that all changed with the Will It Run Doom video and the demo I showed in that, a much more classic renderer architecture, unlike the old 2D systems. Now, that automatically meant I was going to start triggering the corruption on the screen because I couldn't synchronize that code with the vertical blanking interval. Now, I'm kind of a victim of my own success there. The whole CPU system has ended up a lot more powerful than I thought it was going to be at the start, and so I didn't think I was going to be able to work on code like that. In the frame buffer video, I did talk about some ways I could get around that, but if you're really observant, in that doomed demo, I've got a small tweak to the circuit that I never really talked about. And so I'd like to take a look at that today and see if we can refine it and make it at least a partial solution to the screen corruption problem. Okay, let's get it fired up and take a look at that corruption. Okay, so here's the latest incarnation of the Doomed demo. I'm slowly iterating it and adding some functionality necessary to turn it into a real game. You see I've uh, improved some of the color reproduction with the tile data mode from the last time I showed it. And I've also got uh, a new large character font and uh, the code necessary to display numbers with that. But the subject of this video is this corruption at the top of the screen. Now that's caused by the tile data circuit. When I write to the memory, it overwrites the address data with the data that I want to write. While the write is in progress, the outputs are overwritten by the data item that I'm writing. So what was that chip that I added in the original Doomed demo and how did it help? Now what I had was an AND gate that merged the mem region select line and the clock for the output circuit. So the idea there was that I would suspend the updating of the output whilst the memory write was in progress and so instead of overwriting the output with whatever data we're trying to write into memory at an entirely unrelated address. What we actually get is the last pixel we processed stretched out by as long as the write operation takes. So we're still getting corruption, but the corruption is less of a visual impact. So I want to reproduce that circuit now, and I'm going to start by moving this latch over just to give us a bit of working room. So this is the proxy for the sprite merge I'm moving. And that's just the upper four bits are pulled low. Okay, that's working. This is a 74LS08. Now, ideally, I'd use a fast version of this, but I don't have one to hand. This is a simple AND gate. We're going to take the clock, pass it to one input. I'm going to grab the mem region lines for the tile map and tile data. And then we'll start using this merged up clock. Now, I can take this line in and out and I can just about see a difference. The glitches are ever so slightly shorter when we have that circuit enabled. And the reason why this doesn't make the same positive impact that it did in the previous circuit is because the VJ circuits moved on a lot. We've got additional steps in the display pipeline 
And so the amount of time the corrupted data is propagating through the system is much longer. Let's fire up the scope and take a look. Right, let's start off with a look at the memory region line. This might be a lot easier if we trigger single instances. So this is the mem region line for the main tile map, and it goes low when we're writing to it. And that's the thing that's causing the corruption. Now, inside the tile map circuit, that causes the address lines to be overwritten with whatever's on the main address bus in order to facilitate the memory write operation. Now let's add to that the VGA clock. Now this is where it gets difficult because the VJ circuit is clocked at a vastly higher rate than the main CPU. We've got 25 megahertz and the signals get really tricky on the breadboards, which is why I'm really pushing hard to try and convert the remaining breadboards to PCBs before I start trying to build additional bits of circuitry for the VGA. The clock is not an exact divider for the 25.175 megahertz VGA clock either. So if we grab multiple versions of this, we can see the actual alignment between these signals changes in different captures. So instead of looking at the clock, let's take a look at the output of our AND operation. And that's kind of what we expected. The clock is ticking away and then we see it suppressed during the write operation. Now the reason why we still see corruption is because the output of this circuit is several clock steps removed in the VJ pipeline from the actual generation of the data in the tile map. So you've got the tile map data is used to look up into tile data, then it goes through the proxy, then the pallet output, then onto the DAX. So you've got this multiple cycle pipeline going on in which the data is following through. So what we actually wanted to do was block that signal further down the pipe when the corrupted data is actually making it to the end. Now I did think about a few different ways of doing that and one was to use a set reset latch where I would set it at the moment the write operation started and then do the reset much further down once the data hits the back but I don't think I need to do anything quite that complex. I think what we want to do is just introduce a delay into the operation and then that will have this circuit working at least as well as the version I showed back for the doomed demo and that's kind of an improvement enough for us to uh, commit this circuit to PCB. I don't think we need to make it perfect because I think that's kind of a distraction for the current project. I'm going to turn the scope off because I'm aware of how much noise it is in the background. So since we're talking about a delay, let's get a 574 ground power and the active low enable. And then we want to introduce a simple delay chain. I'm going to put the memory region line for the tile map into that first slot. And then we'll have the same circuit as we had before. So let's restart the demo. All right, so we've got all the corruption. That should remove the first pixel of it. As we move it down the delay line, we manage to remove more and more of the output until suddenly we get to this point and we start getting different colors introduced because what we're doing is we're latching the written data some of the time, depending on the exact lineup. So let's try a different approach. So we're delaying a copy of the mem region line, but what I want to do is turn this two input AND gate into a free input AND gate. And then we can AND both the original mem region line, but with the delayed copy that's matching up with the other end of the pipeline. And I'm hoping you can see this, but the results are far better. The corruption up here from the writes themselves are far less noticeable. Down here, we do see a different type of corruption, which is instead of stretching the glitched data across the screen, we're stretching the pixel that was being written at the time of the write, and we're stretching that across. But it's a lot less noticeable because the general colors of the screen, you know, this output's quite blocky and 
We're putting colors next to other similar colors a lot of the time. So I'd actually say this was an improvement over the original clutch circuit I stuck onto the Doomed demo in order to try and clean it up a little bit. Now one thing I would like to try is to see if I can move the start of the latching back a little bit. Yep, yeah, that's even better still. That's really cool. In an ideal world, we would still avoid updating any of the buffers during the actual display portion of the VGA. But this circuit does reduce the amount of corruption we're going to see if we are forced to update the frame buffer irrespective of the blanking intervals. And so I think that's a really nice, simple circuit to add to what we've done, which means I'm going to be able to play around with uh, this demo and include it in my final set of uh, games and demos at the end of the project. Okay, I'm very pleased with that. In the frame buffer video, I did talk about more advanced ways of solving this problem properly by using a write FIFO that stores memory updates until the blanking interval kicks in, and then we can safely access the memory, which would give the CPU absolutely free reign to write as much as it wanted without actually causing any corruption on screen. But the circuitry to do that was quite complex and it was significant expansion of the scope from how I originally designed the VGA circuit. And I really didn't want to go there because as you can tell, this project has kind of stretched on a lot longer than I'd originally hoped anyway. So I don't think uh, adding significant new features to the project is the right thing to do. As it is, this simple circuit modification does clean up the visuals quite a lot. I can still do exactly the same kind of synchronized writes I was planning to do for most of the other demos, and that won't have any screen corruption at all. But this change means we've heavily minimized the screen corruption if I'm kind of really pushing the boundaries and doing some direct update like the Doomed demo does. So hopefully I'll be able to make this into a nice, fun little simple game with the whole 3D effect going on and uh, that will be a nice kind of core part of the demos I have at the end of the project. As always, I want to extend a special thanks to my patrons. I'm really appreciating the support. I actually feel like I've got a bit of momentum on the project again at the moment, and that's really a good thing. I'm also really enjoying both the circuit build, but also I've been able to spend some time programming the system, just exploring its capabilities. And that's really why I started this whole project in the first place. And working on a system I've built myself from scratch is phenomenally rewarding. I hope you're all finding it interesting. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.